Hello everybody, Mr. Moo here in the cockpit, here in the new cow sector, about 14,000 light years from the bubble. Boy, did I pick a bad time to get away from it all, based on uh, what I've been hearing going on back, back thereabouts on the homestead. But, wanted to bring up some stuff that uh, got called to my attention in previous videos. I'm doing a lot, the Neutron Highway, driving off warships, etc. But... You know, you're right. Some of you viewers have pointed out that uh, I haven't exactly done too much for brand new, brand, brand new pilots. And so getting to know how to do some of these, you know, flying around neutron stars and you know, using, using super engineered weapons, it's all well and good. But uh, let's go back to step one. Let's get to know your ship. So, here we are using the Bifrost. A little worse for wear. It's, it's uh, had, some, had some encounters here and there. But uh, yeah, let's, for the new, the new commanders out there, the new pilots, let's have a look and see what we got here. So let's start with menu one. That's your targeting menu. Navigation, transactions, contacts. If you have something targeted, uh, we'll get to that. Let's start with the navigation tab. So here you've got the system primary star, anything unexplored here. Usually the stars are the closest to the, are the leftmost in the column, and then planets are a tick to the right, and then moons are a tick to the right of that. So just looking at this, you can see one star, three planets, and two of the planets have moons. Below that you've got systems nearby and their distance there's only so many systems that uh, can be covered on the on the column here so you'll have to go to your galaxy map if you want anything further out uh, you can set filters in here my personal preference is to leave everything checked except asteroid clusters they just clutter up the map and they don't really do anything good for you you can't you can scan them but you don't get anything off them you don't, you know, don't get your name on them. You don't get any cash for them. They're really more a, a curiosity than anything if you're out mining. And at this distance, you, <laughs> you aren't going to be flying 14,000 light years to mine some rocks. Next up, you've got the uh, classics here, the galaxy map. I've got this thing configured for finding neutron stars. But let's go to the realistic view. And you can see where we're at here. I have got a lot of bookmarks that need cleaning up. Then you can filter the map, and I've shown this before in my How to Scoop Fuel video, but same thing, you go to Map, Show by Color, Show by, well, set the uh, star class up. And then you just select OBAF GKM, and these are your scoopable stars. I'm also selected for carbon stars, wolf rayets, and non sequence. Plenty of B class stars out here. And the power play stuff I will touch upon later if anybody really wants me to do a So You Want to Do Power Play video. But for right now, We'll just stick with this. Transactions, these are bounties, anything you got to pick up yet, stuff laying around, etc. Contacts, okay, so I deployed my fighter and then moved back to the bridge on my ship. You can select the contact, and as you can see, it is an unmanned F-63 Condor. Now that a contact has been selected, you've got the sub-targets. And you can move through here and select individual targets for targeting a ship. Now if you want to take out the power plant, if you want to take out the shield generator, if you want to take out the thrusters, or for some reason take out a heatsink launcher, that's how you do it. 
And I have no cargo scanner on board, so I can't scan the target and see what their target is, what their cargo is. That's what the inventory is, though, on menu one. That is what the other guy is carrying. So moving on, we've got menu two. That is the communications panel, comms. Multi-crew, letters, or messages. That's going to be tuned up in the 2.4 update from what I've heard. A little bit more organization of the messages menu. Uh, generally, if there's anybody out here, you can target them. Or you target a ship, and then you can enter in a message. Hit enter, type your message. Yeah. Unable to comply. I wasn't asking you, Alex. Let's go with the classics, Hello World. That's broadcast out to the local area. Any pilot in the region can see it. Moving on, menu three. These are your SRVs and your fighters and crew management. I have no crew. I have two SRVs and I have one fighter just in case somebody wanted to go, you know, flying around and seeing the sights when they uh, popped on for multi-crew. Uh, from the uh, from the fighter menu, you can. There's not too much I can do right here, to be honest, because the fighter is unmanned. But if there were anybody on any AI pilots on board, I could tell it to you know defend, attack the target, maintain formation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I can't even recall the fighter since there's nobody on board. Now what I can do is switch out. And let's see here. Switch to fighter. And we'll just get back on board the fighter, or on board the mothership really quick here. Menu 3. Helm. Request docking. There we go, so we don't waste a fighter. Okay, and everything's back on board, safe and sound. Next up, menu four. And this is your, well, first tab is just um, reputation, status, etc. Yeah, I'm Pridge to uh, Pranav Antal. It's, I'm just in it for the uh, Enforcer Cannon, just kind of poke around, see what that's like. Curiosity. If you use your A and D keys to navigate this tab, you can get your reputation, your permits, what, um, you know, what systems you have access to. Statistics. Go through here and you can see pretty much everything about your character. Passenger missions. Missions accepted 212. I've carried this many people. Celebrities, soldiers, refugees. Five disgruntled heads of state. Oh well. Um, total delivered. 1,224, total ejected, 14. They weren't ejected, they were reaccommodated. There's a good word for it, they were reaccommodated. Crew stealing my money. <laughs> uh, time in multi crew. CQC. I haven't played too much CQC. I want to get back into that. We'll see. Also shows uh, time played in here somewhere. There we go. Uh, finances. Cargo insurance. Ship insurance, etc. Ship rebuy is... Yeah, numbers match up there. 6.7 million. Uh, next up we have the modules. This is your ship's internals. Let's uh, let's do some power management here. 
So I've got some damage to the ship, as seen here, where you have numbers that aren't 100%. I've also got certain things turned off because I don't need them, so I can save power on board. So anyway, you can see my power output is 100% and my power usage is 97%. But these auto field maintenance units run at 25% each, so I turn that on, I'm going to be running a power deficit and certain modules are going to turn off. Like my life support system. I don't want my life support system to turn off, so we'll reprioritize that. Actually, no, we're keeping that at priority one. Other things like the shield generator can go to uh, higher priorities. Or higher number, lower priority. That's a good way to put it. Uh, sensors, cargo hatches set, power distributor, fighter hangar, data link scanner. Not that it matters, it's not drawing any power. and the thrusters. This way, when I turn on the field maintenance unit, Shields offline. I don't turn off my life support system. We'll activate the second one, and I'm just gonna deactivate the thrusters all the way. And there you can see the other modules reactivating. Okay, so how to use an auto field maintenance unit. Uh, you take the device you want to fix, like say the frame shift drive, click on it and deactivate it, or just go straight to repair. There you can see the little wrench, the ammo being used up on these. Module repaired, my frame shift drive is back to 100%. And you're gonna need to bring these things along if you use the Neutron Highway. Just saying that one right now. Every time you use a, a Neutron Star Super Jump, you're going to damage your frame shift drive. Bring that back online. Not too worried about my cargo hatch. My power plant, I can't bring that offline. That's stuck at 93% for now. I'm not worried about repairing the repair units, but if you're really in a pinch, that's what you can use to uh, uh, to bring them back and double up on them. Uh, vehicle hangar, frame shift wake scanner, 98%, all good on those. Let's turn these back off, bring the thrusters back on. There we go. Next up, fire groups. Nothing too advanced here. This is, you know, two sets, trigger two in fire group one. This is trigger one in fire group one. And the data link scanner is running off of trigger two on fire group two. Inventory, what you got for cargo? I've got nothing in my cargo bay, even though I can carry 128 tons. Uh, my materials, this is materials and data. This is for Engineering. Engineering and Synthesis. Synthesis is this, my FSD injection, frameshift drive. You can click on it and vanadium and germanium. Use two vanadium and use one germanium and you can get a 25% distance boost out of your frameshift drive. It doesn't damage the drive like a neutron star does. So that's good. Uh, if I had the materials, if I had more um, cadmium, thank you, Alex. If I had more cadmium, I could arrange for a 50% jump boost or the premium jump boost, which requires arsenic and polonium. I can also refill my auto field maintenance unit. So if I run out of ammo, I can refill that. I can only get the standard, the basic refill, which will resupply the module. Still, handy.
and the functions tab. This is also important. You can actually control a lot of ship functions from here, as the name suggests. Uh, thank you, Alex. Here's the wing beacon. If you're in a wing with friends, activate this. And you will drop a wing beacon. Other friends in your wing will be able to see you from, uh, from Super Cruise and drop right in on your position. Silent running. This will uh, close off your heat vents. And so your ship holds all of its heat inside. It's for trying to stealth through things. External lights. Pretty self-explanatory. Flight assist on or off. Right now, I'm flying in flight assist on. That means I pull the stick back, ship's nose goes up, I let go of the stick, ship's nose stops. Kind of flies your ship like an airplane, like you're, like you're expecting flying in an atmosphere. But we aren't in an atmosphere, we're in a vacuum. Flight assist off puts your ship into Newtonian flight mode. Now... Unable to comply. Thank you, Alex. Now, I let go of the stick, I keep moving until I turn flight assist back on. Like so. Uh, good for, well, I'll show you what flight assist on can be good for. Come on. Oh, right. So that's another thing. I can't deploy the fighter unless I power up the hangar. There we go. So a quick and dirty walkthrough on flight assist. And activating my head tracker so I can look around here. Okay. So I'm using my thrusters. I'm keeping my nose on my mothership and using the down thrusters and pulling up slightly, and then I can keep my nose on it while I strafe around. So, let's do an approach. Turn off flight assist. Now... Unable to comply. Alex, I'm not asking for anything. Now I can keep my nose on it while flying at a, um, at a higher speed than if I were just using thrusters. Now, I just went on a slow, slow approach there because, well... Don't want to go crashing into my own ship or something. Don't want to do anything too terribly heroic at the moment. Got a limited number of these things. Okay. And redocking the fighter again. No, really. Redocking the fighter. Come on. Apparently I got too close before the garage door was fully down. That's better. And one last thing here in the functions tab. Well, actually a few more things. Rotational correction, that's for if you're docking at a rotating station. I've never had to turn that one off. Just letting you know. Uh, turret weapon mode, if you have turrets, you can set them to forward fire, or fire at will, or fire on my target. Forward fire, they act just like fixed weapons. Uh, fire at will, they will fire at any target that comes to bear in their arc if it's attacking you. And fire at my target, they will only focus on the target you currently have selected. Pre-flight checks, that's to check through your controls as you launch your ship. Um, might be worth... Might be worth turning on for new pilots. Report crimes against me, on or off. Uh, on, anybody performs a crime against you, the police show up. Why would you turn that off, you ask? Well, sometimes you just want to blow up the target and you don't want the local Copaconda to show up and get in the way of your guns and then you're wanted. Orbit lines, that's explanatory that's if you're doing exploration or you know if you just want to see the 
orbital lines. Well, I'll show you here when I go to Super Cruise in a second. Display clock, gun sight mode, trailing and leading. Uh, experiment, see which one you prefer. It's just where the, um, where the pipper goes versus where you want the aim point. Sensor scale, and this one is important, reboot and repair. If you don't have an auto field maintenance unit, if your ship takes critical damage, if your thrusters get shot out, if your frame shift drive isn't working, you can activate this. It will shut your ship down, you will tumble, you will go to internal air in your suit. So that's why I'm not going to use it. I like to preserve my air just in case. Um, you'll go to internal air and it will try to cannibalize all your other modules to pull up enough parts to repair the critically damaged stuff and bring it back online. Self-destruct. Pretty obvious. Don't push it on accident. You'll regret it. Okay, quick look at orbit lines here. Let's get up to speed. Let's deactivate the fighter hangar. Actually, a quick thing here when I do this. You can see to the left, you can see the fuel. 0 0.86 per hour. So I'm using up... Um, here 860 kilograms of fuel per hour 0.86 metric tons if i deactivate the fighter hangar fuel consumption goes down so in a pinch in an emergency you can turn almost everything off like if i turn my thrusters off say i'm critically low on fuel i need to call the fuel rats i need help I need to make my air last, or make my power and fuel last as long as it can. Turn everything off, except life support. There you can see I've just cut my fuel consumption significantly. Shields offline. And there, I've cut it from, now it's just 50 kilograms per hour. Much, much lower fuel consumption. Good in case of emergencies. Also, you can hear the crackling. That is actually my canopy frosting up. That's ice forming on my canopy. There we go. You can kind of see it there. My ship has gotten so cold, my thermal signature has dropped to 9. 9% 9 heat. So, keeping that in mind, also, above the uh, fuel consumption gauge there, you can see that uh, little line. That is your heat signature. Let's turn things back on here. And you can see it start to increase. The lower your thermal signature, the lower your heat signature, the harder it is to detect you at, at range. People have to get a lot closer to see you. Scanner, no, don't need that. I do need thrusters. And there we go. I don't actually need my cargo hatch either. Okay, now let's go to Super Cruise so we can see the orbit lines. Okay, what's deployed here? My cargo scoop is not out, as far as I know. Check my landing gear. Landing gears, okay. Ah, there we go. My weapons were deployed. Retract weapons. Retracting all weapons. Got to kind of run through a checklist. The three things that can prevent you from jumping to jumping to warp. 
Am I mass locked? Well, four things. Am I mass locked? Is my landing gear down? Is my cargo scoop out? And are my weapons deployed? Also, quick thing, the difference between Super Cruise, Frame Shift, and FSD. Super Cruise. So you've got controls actually set up for all of them. You've got a Super Cruise only switch that you can uh, bind. You've got a hyperspace or, um, yeah, hyperspace uh, control you can bind. Or you have a unified FSD control that you can bind. What's the difference? Well, Super Cruise is just jumping, Online. Uh, jumping to high, hmm, excuse me, jumping to high speed inside a system. We haven't jumped out to the next system. We are still in this one. We're just moving a lot faster now. And let's pull up. There we go. Give myself a target. There you can see the orbit lines. And that is the lines, well, as it says, of all the orbital bodies right now in the system. You can also see a vertical line or a horizontal line. That planet's um, equator, it looks like it is, well, either the equator or its moon, is on 90 degree offset from the rest of the system. And this is what happens when you turn orbit lines off, turn it back on. There you go. It's a navigation aid. But sometimes you don't want to see the navigation aids when you're uh, trying to get a good screenshot going. Okay, coming up on approach. Set to one. Loading requested configuration. Out here exploring, I still like to have my shields up just because... Well, just because it uh, they insulate me from a hard landing if I decide to make planet fall. But I like to have the majority of my power to my engines. Okay, coming up on approach. This bar here that I'm moving back and forth in my throttle, uh, that'll be blue by default. That's your smart, kind of your smart range, your ship will approach at the optimum speed. It's not infallible, but it's it's pretty good. And now I'm just closing in to get a scan here and killing my throttle. Okay, now on the system map we can see what we got here. Move over to the next tab over. High metal content world. 6.1 earth masses, radius of 10,000 kilometers. 2.44 G at the surface, 168 uh, Kelvin for a temperature. Surface pressure, surface pressure is 9.28 atmospheres. Uh, atmosphere is 96% nitrogen, 2.7% oxygen, 0.9% helium. The volcanism is interesting because the geysers are actually throwing out rock. Not a full-on volcano, it'd be like if, well, a cross between a volcano and Old Faithful. Orbital period, 6,000 days, that's how long, that's how long a year is on this world. Rotational period, one day, so it's still got a 24-hour day. And the axial tilt on it is 107 degrees. Yes, this thing is twisted sideways for all intents and purposes. And there you go, commanders. A little bit more of a rundown on the internals of your ship, what the controls do, what the dials and gauges mean. I know I've probably missed something, but this is the, this is kind of the, what, what you don't see, hopefully what a lot of what you don't see in the uh, simulation tests and the tutorial videos. Until then, get to know your ship, fly safe. And uh, yeah, with all the stuff going on out there with Thargoids starting to build up, uh, 
Fly carefully. Take care, Commanders.